This week, we will take a look at some THS journalism students' unexpected setback as they had to decide for this past weekend. And two more athletes are taking their careers to a higher level in sports. Welcome back to another episode of WTHS News. I'm Avery Millward. Over the weekend, Tupelo High School's Quill and Scroll National Journalism Honor Society made the long trek to Columbia, South Carolina. Ava takes a look at the challenges they encountered. <laughs> the Tupelo High School chapter of Quill and Scroll made history this past weekend when they traveled to Columbia, South Carolina for the Southern Interscholastic Press Association, SIPA, conference. This trip was historic for a few reasons. One, it was the first time Tupelo had attended SIPA. And two, their bus broke down six and a half hours away from home. So I look out the window towards the back and I see like just smoke everywhere. And I was just, I was kind of freaking out because I didn't know, I don't know anything about cars or anything. So I had no idea what that would mean. That is until an unlikely hero stepped in and Cool and Scroll members were able to move their bags from this bus to this bus. If you got a bus that broke down, we're here to serve you. Make sure that the kids are safe, make sure everybody's happy and get to where they need to get to be, and that's what we do. Both Newton County and Tupelo schools' main priorities were to keep the kids safe. Uh, well, you know, our main plan is to keep students safe, and I think we, with the circumstances that, that came about, I think we did the best we could do. The Newton County motto is to help anybody wherever they need it. So, when they heard that Tupelo students were stranded on the side of the road in their school bus, they sprung into action. You know, all we need to hear is school bus. And so our team is always ready to assist. While this was the first time the students on the Tupelo bus had experienced this, it wasn't Newton County's first time. We're, on, we're located right off of uh, Interstate 20. And so from time to time, school buses uh, will need mechanical assistance or we've certainly had to transport uh, uh, basketball teams, football teams, those kinds of things uh, from time to time when they have trouble here in the school district. All in all, both school districts pulled together to create a happy and safe ending for the students. I'm Ava Lacey, WTHS News. Thanks, Ava. Despite all the chaos, they came home with multiple wins. Congratulations to Golden Wave Media staffers for SIPO Awards. Martha Cruz earned Award of Merit in Environmental Portrait and Amari Tucker earned Honorable Mention Club Photo at the 2022 SIPA Journalism Convention. WTHS members Ava Lacey earned Honorable Mention in Best Visual Contest for Reporter and Sarah Bazell earned Best of Show for her Human Interest Story. Speaking of wins, theater also brought home a couple. Recently, Tupelo High School's Thespian Troop 1949 traveled to Meridian for the State Thespian Conference. Tupelo students won first place in the chapter select with their play, That's Not How I Remember It. Several students were also awarded superiors for their individual competition pieces. All in all, Tupelo students brought home 15 superior awards. These wins gave the students the opportunity to travel to Indiana for the National Thespian Conference. I won two duo scene superiors, a solo musical superior, a superior in Playworks, first place in Playworks, all-star cast award, and then we all won first place chapter select. Uh, I was shocked. I really didn't expect it. Uh, it was a huge surprise, but I worked really hard and I was, I was really grateful for it. Despite missing out on multiple competitions, Madrigals will be traveling to Anaheim, California to compete in their biggest competition of the season. Thomas takes a look into how they have been preparing for their upcoming competition. From singing to dancing. THS Mad Jazz is tuning back in season just in time for their competition in Anaheim, California. During the process of learning different techniques, students overcame many challenges. I've learned a lot about uh, the people in the, in the choir and there's a lot of really talented kids in there and it's awesome to see how amazing it is when we get it all together and it sounds really good. 
Even though Mad Jazz has missed out on many competitions, they have been preparing and setting high goals to succeed as an a cappella choir. Senior Kinsley McFarling expresses her love for her classmates and getting to experience a whole new atmosphere. I'm most looking forward to being able to spend time with each other because while we're in school, we're really focused on learning the music and staying on task. Although many students enjoy spending time with each other, Dr. Williams, director of the choir, defines the importance of production in order to compete professionally and academically. The most important lesson that I feel like students have to take with them when you're preparing for a competition is to remember that the goal is to do your best. Um, is It is to practice the way that you want to perform. Um, you have to do all the things uh, every day in class that you want to happen when you're in a performance. Dr. Williams sets high standards for her students, especially for traveling to competitions. When we go to these competitions, uh, we never know if we're going to be competing against fine arts schools, which is schools that basically do music all day and homeschool their academics. Um, we never know, you know, until we get there. And so it's um, the goal is to go and represent Tupelo to the best of our abilities. The achievements they can accomplish are truly endless. When Mad Jazz gets back from California, we will have more updates. I'm Thomas Roper, WTHS News. Thanks, Thomas. It's interesting to see the different things students are involved in at THS. Continuing their soccer careers, two of our soccer girls have decided to level up. Crystal has more in sports. Hey, THS, it's Crystal Williams, and I'm back bringing you this week's sports media. Today, there's a Golden Wave Invitational starting at 2. Last Saturday, our girls track team set an outdoor school record. Girls taking first place and our boys with second overall. Evie Crawford and Avery Hooker decide to further their soccer career with Northwest Community College. I think that it'll help me a lot because it's a high, the highest level I've ever played at, obviously since it's college, but I feel like there's a bunch of different girls that I've never played with, their type of skill. I'm used to just high school or club just a bunch of local people and I think it'll really help me to be more responsible. I think like to work hard even if it's at practice because it always reflects like in a game and practice can make you a way better player so it's important to like work hard at all times at whatever you're doing so that you are a better player. Aiming into this week, Archer had a match against Attila on Tuesday at 5 and Starkville on Thursday at 5. Also, baseball plays against Satillo tonight at 5. And tomorrow's game against North Pontotoc will be played Saturday, April 9th at 11 and 1. This is Crystal Williams with your WTHS Sports Media. Thanks, Crystal. As we continue highlighting THS students, Lucy recognizes two students on their outstanding academic achievements. The National Merit Scholarship Program is a national academic competition which provides high school students with financial aid to attend college. Students at Tupelo High School can qualify for this by receiving a high score on the PSAT their junior year. Two, so that is really F at negative four. Two members of the class of 2022 have been announced National Merit finalists. Mont Waterer and Nicole Malev have worked extremely hard. These students were thrilled to receive this pleasant surprise. I was really excited and I told my mom and dad. <laughs> I was really surprised. I thought I did awful on the test, so it was it was a good surprise. Ma and Nicole made sure to prepare for the PSAT by taking practice tests and looking over PSAT prep books with questions from old tests. Juniors at the high school have the opportunity to take the PSAT during their spring semester. Ma and Nicole share some of their tips for doing the best on this test. Let's take it seriously. A lot of people don't realize that if you do good on that one test, you get lots of money for colleges. So even if you don't go like get an old book like I didn't look through it, you know, Maybe do like, ask your math teacher for some help with stuff that's going to be on it before. I would say it mostly just takes a lot of practice and make sure you get enough sleep the night before. This amazing achievement means so much for our school and these hardworking students. Uh, it means a lot that, you know, it helps out my parents. You know, I have three siblings, so they're going to have to pay for college four times. So it's good to know that I'm helping a little bit at least. 
Nicole is heading to Duke University in the fall, and Mont is still deciding on what college he will attend. These students definitely have a bright future ahead of them. I'm Lucy Johnston, WTHS News. Thanks, Lucy. Even with all the chaos happening in the world right now, Sarah introduces a teacher looking on the bright side. About 135,000 children are adopted in the U.S. every year. 2% of Americans choose adoption, and among that 2% includes Tupelo art teacher Pat E. Parker. With two children from different countries, she never fails to tell the stories of their journeys. I could not give birth. I went through in vitro fertilization, and then at the time, the next process was called ovulation induction, where they would just inject your ovaries with hormones, and I knew then that having a baby was more important than giving birth for me, for, so we switched to adoption. In 2001, they adopted their first son, Sam, from the Ukraine. When we had Sam and we took him shopping to buy him clothes that weren't the orphanages, we had taken American clothes, but we had to buy Ukrainian clothes while we were there. They could not get over that we had American dollars. I mean, they would pull out chairs and just start bringing in the racks. and. Every, everyone, everywhere we went was very accommodating. Being their first adoption, the process seemed unusual at first. Ukraine is different in that you don't know who you, what's gonna happen. So we rented a flat, we rented a driver, we hired a translator, and you go in and get approved by an adoption director, and then you sit in a room and they literally bring in children until you know which one is yours. So I kept thinking, I might get the wrong one or I might want all of them, and, but it was just, God makes it clear who your child is when they come in. Years later, in search of a sibling for Sam, they added Stella to their family. Stella's process was a whole lot different because China already had it down and they would empty one room of an orphanage at a time. So we were in a group with 15 other families from all over, the, all over America and we all went together and were all given our babies on the same day. All the people in China that would kiss our hands and thank us for adopting a baby. It's just, it's humbling. Adoption started out as the only option for the couple, but then it turned into their greatest blessing. If it is on your heart to have a child, then yes, I, I have no problem suggesting adoption because there are children waiting for you. And I mean, you can't tell me that these two children weren't meant to be mine. This is, I just had to go to the other side of the world and find them. I'm Sarah Brazell, WTHS News. Thanks, Sarah. It's so cool seeing people giving kids chances through adoption. As we transition into spring break, Paola takes a look at the forecast for some popular spring break destinations. Hey, ready for a fun or boring spring break? If you're going on vacation, here are the weather predictions for next week. If you're going to Florida, you'll end up with a few showers, a few clouds, but mostly sunny with a temperature of around 70 to 80 degrees. In Colorado, there will be lots of rain, snow, with a temperature of around 50 to 67 degrees. Moving to LA, you'll end up with a nice weather with a temperature of around 70 to 80 degrees. And last but not least, New York, which is going to have lots of clouds and showers with a temperature of around 40 to 50 degrees. Oh, and if you're not going anywhere because you're broke like me, Tupelo will have a temperature of around 66 to 70 degrees with clouds, rain, showers, and some thunderstorms. And back to the studio. That's all for this week. Be sure to follow us on all our social media accounts and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this week's edition of WTHS News, and have a great spring break.